In this example, we are going to use DeepTrack 2.0 to track single particles. Hello, I'm Saga and I will be your guide for this tutorial. Let's go through example 2 where we use DeepTrack for single particle tracking. First, we import the objects needed for this example. And we load the experimental videos we will analyze later with DeepTrack. Here, we also specify the size of the images the network will be trained for. Then, we define the dataset. The training set consists of simulated images, the particles are simulated as spheres, and the particle position is set close to the center of the image, with some variation in x and y, as well as in the z direction. These values are based on pixel units. The particle radius is set between 1 and 2 microns, and the refractive index between 1.5 and 1.6, and L is the number of terms to evaluate the Mi theory. Now that we have defined the particle, we will image it. The particle is imaged using a bright field microscope with numerical aperture between 0.15 and 0.25. We also define the resolution and magnification of the microscope. To simulate the broad spectrum of bright field microscope, we define 10 individual optical devices, each imaging the particle at a single wavelength between 400 and 700 nanometers, represented in this loop here. The result is then average for a single bright field image. We also pad the images with zeros to avoid edge effects and define the region of the image to output. We then define the training labels as the particle position by extracting the position property from the images. And we divide the position by the image size such that the possible values are contained between minus 0.5 and 0.5. And now it's time to visualize the training images, where the green circle indicates the particle position. Simulating Mi particles is slow. To speed up training, we implement augmentation techniques. Here we flip and mirror the images. Note that DeepTrack ensures that the position is still correct after the augmentation. To allow for more distinct augmented images, we add illumination gradient and noise to the images after the augmentation, as well as normalizing the images. Now that we have a training dataset ready, we move on to the network. Here we use a convolutional neural network with three convolutional layers and two dense layers at the end for two outputs, that is the x and y coordinates of the particle. And we use the mean square error to train the network. Here we can see the model summary. And now for the training of the network. If we keep train model as false, we load the pre-trained network that we have available for this problem. But if we want to train a new model, we change train model to true. Here we have a validation set of 200 images and a minimum of 10,000 training images and a maximum of 20,000. And we use a batch size of 64 and 250 epochs in the training. And now let's train the model. After the training is completed, we can visualize the training and validation loss. And now we evaluate our trained network. First, we test the network on simulated images that are generated in the same way as the training images, but they are not the same images as, as are used in the training. Here, we show the prediction of each output versus the ground truth value for the x and y coordinate. We can also see the pixel error as a function of some properties of the simulated images, like the x and y position, the z position, the signal to noise ratio, the illumination gradient in different directions, the refractive index of the particles, and the numerical aperture of the optical device. And finally, we test the model on some experimental data. We track two videos with the model we have trained, as well as with a standard radial symmetry method. The first video is of an optically tracked particle in good imaging conditions. The blue circle is the tracking from D-Track, and the green cross is from the radial symmetry method. We see that both methods are able to track the particle very well. 
And the second video is of the same optically trapped particle, but now in bad imaging conditions. And here we see that DeepTrack is still able to track the particle quite well, but the other method not so well.